experience depending on the context. <clears throat> and so what we are advocating is a book should be a springboard to the imagination. We're just using the book as a springboard to the imagination. And I'm going to move now to Oliver Jeffers, the child of books. I have uh, retyped the words because they are <coughs> written in child's handwriting and could be quite difficult to read. I'm a child of books, I come from a world of stories. And upon my imagination, I float. I've sailed across the sea of words to ask if you will come away with me. Some people have forgotten where I live, but along these words, I can show you the way. We will travel over mountains of make-believe, discover treasures in the darkness. We can lose ourselves in forests of fairy tales and escape monsters in haunted castles. For this is our world we have made from stories. <coughs> Our house is a home of invention where anyone at all can come. For imagination is free. <clears throat> Studies have also shown that young children, especially when they engage in play, they, they kind of hone their problem uh, solving skills. And I would like to illustrate that with a couple of books. <clears throat> so you have this book about two boys playing. But actually, in their imagination, one was a shark and the other was a train. <coughs> and Luana is leaving for Africa. <coughs> this book, on the dedication page, the author wrote, For my sister Martine, who often left for Africa and came back five minutes later. Again, the power of the imagination. And John Birmingham, a, a, a very celebrated British uh, author, for children's books. He's a great celebrator of the imagination. I'm going to use one of his books, Come Away from the Water, Shirley, to illustrate this. A family going to the beach. And on this side here, this is uh, what is actually going on in the family. But on this side, this is what is going on in Shirley's, inside Shirley's head, her imagination. And this side is completely worthless. So it's up to you to, and up to Shirley to imagine. So the, the, the mother talking to the child, why don't you go and play with those children? But actually, Shirley has already got the aim in play. So she went on the journey, she ended up with pirates. And all the time the mother is talking to her, but she's in a world of her own. And at the end of the day, she comes back and joins the family. In the power of the imagination. And this is another one, I'll be there yet set up. Then a set of a family going to visit the grandmother to celebrate her birthday. The boy found the car journey very boring, and in his mind, he also travels. In his imagination, pirates, knights in shining armor, pyramids, and dinosaurs. All in the imagination. And Mitsu Masaru, a Japanese, American Japanese author, he says that sometimes we are too scientific when children ask us questions. And he gave this example of the rainbow, that when the children ask us, how come there is a rainbow? What made the rainbow? We immediately launch into us the scientific explanation, when in fact, you should just allow the child to wonder, to imagine what is actually happened first, before we give the scientific explanation. And for that, I would like to illustrate by one of my favorite books, The Track, illustrate this power of imagination. The girl starts off to school. My mother doesn't walk me to school anymore, but she doesn't know me leave the edge of the jungle. And as she walks to school, she sees everything around her as animals. And I hope you can see them too. The giraffe. Yes. Yeah. 
We're almost there. Only the mountain to climb. The mountain here. And then she's in school. The power of the imagination. Everything that she sees is an animal. And the book ends with all the animals that are featured in the book. <clears throat> anyway, I, I, I started picking up this hobby about, uh, hobby about two, three years ago. When I looked around me and I saw this word imagination, it keeps uh, recurring. So you have Ikea in, in the advertisement saying make space for imagination and uh, our, our partners, the advertisements, are built for imagination. Make room for your imagination. And this is a, a TV series uh, that, that uh, is entitled Imagination Series. And even our politicians, now that we have, we always say now that Singapore has finally arrived, we have settled all our bread and butter issues, we can now talk about uh, imagination, we can talk about the arts, dancing and singing, etc. And, and our, our then education minister says, we need to nurture the whole child make them imaginative. And the following year, the same message, imaginative, and political imagination to improve the country, how to make a smart nation limited only by imagination. And this was last month, using imagination and creativity to produce energy. Uh, Neil Gaiman is another uh, children's book author. He said that um, in 2007, China organized the first party-approved science fiction and fantasy convention. And he asked uh, the, 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 the civil servants, why did you come up with this convention uh, for the first time? Uh, and, and why fantasy? And the, the answer that he got was that they went overseas, they visited Google, they visited Apple, and they visited Microsoft to talk to the workers. And every single worker in these three companies told them that they read science fiction. And so China decided that maybe there's something to this. And so on that note, I'd like to share this uh, science fiction for young readers chalk. It's a wordless book about three kids, three, three kids who went out to walk in the park on a rainy day, and they saw this paper bag with a uh, color chalk in it. They took it out and the girl drew a sun and immediately the sun came out. And they realized these, these pieces of chalk are magical. Then the other girl drew butterflies and butterflies appeared. Then the boy drew dinosaurs and they were chased by dinosaurs. So they said, quick, let's draw the rain. And the rain came and melted the dinosaurs. And so back and walk to all power of the imagination. Uh, Achilles, he when he was uh, having, having a leisurely bath, that, that was how the story went, that he came up with, with his Eureka moment. And of course, we also know uh, Newton, when he was sitting under the apple tree, also the story goes, that the apple fell and that was how the, the, the gravity really came about. And also Josh the Mistral, when he was out walking, uh, in the, in the, out walking, I was going to say in the jungle, I guess, where he comes from, there's no jungle. Um, there are these talking birds clicking, uh, sticking on his hands, and that's how he came to invent the bell code. So inventions come about because we have the leisure to kind of pause and think and ask ourselves how we can make this world a better place. So do not be worried if children are bored. Encourage them to make something out of their boredom. So if they see a ladder, what can they do? What, what can they imagine this ladder will take them? This particular boy coming home, seeing an apple, he said maybe it's not an apple, maybe it's a half orange, maybe it's a fish, maybe it's full of devices inside. So just letting them imagine. The other thing that I like about uh, using these uh, children's books uh, in terms of imagination is how they make the world a better place and lift up our spirits. This is book Bad Rats by Eric Dropman. So you have a, a, a lineup of rats who are told that they have to go through lessons because they are bad. And Josiah the rat said, but why are we bad? And Professor uh, Perimeter who has been assigned to teach them say you are bad because you follow your heart and not your mind. 
Okay, so on that final day, the test, suddenly they have these three. Um, she started singing what she thought was her last song. She started dancing what she thought was her last dance, and Josiah drew a leaf. Whereas before, they were never allowed to imagine all this. And Professor Perimeter decided that he saw beyond the walls he had built, beyond the world he had known, and deep into the imagination. He had never imagined what it was like outside before, but now he had the courage to imagine because Josiah taught him to do so. So knowledge is power, but imagination is more valuable. The knowledge gives us that power, but the imagination gives us values. New Gagnon again says that because imagination allows us to imagine a better world, then we leave this world a better place, we leave this world a different place. And to illustrate that, I would like to use this book. When I was a girl, I dreamed. She dreamt of adventures wild and rare. She dreamt she was an exceptional teacher who taught exceptional students, that she was a great veterinarian, that she was a good president, president of a country, who listened to every citizen and made the country better. And she dreamt that she was a writer. And the book ends with, yes, as a girl, I dreamed great dreams. Perhaps you dream them too. Reach higher than the stars, my dears, and your dreams will come true. Dream, imagination, and there's a, uh, and this one, that imagination is a terrible thing to waste. And there's an equivalent when I was a boy, I dreamed. Imagination is more powerful than knowledge, more important than knowledge, for while knowledge defines all we currently know and understand, imagination points to all we might yet discover and create. So like the inventors that I mentioned earlier, because we imagine, we are able to discover. And this book talks about this class that was waiting eagerly for the annual competition of the creation of the go-karts and everybody got the same kit. And so the boy brought it home, Raphael brought it home, studied the manual and built the go-kart and he peered over the fence and he saw that his neighbour was not building the go-kart, she was building something else by looking up at the birds and imagining. And so he asked, but why are you not building the go cart? And she said, but why do I have to? And so together, they worked on building something different. <coughs> and they came first, and before you knew it, they were already thinking of their next project. And I wanted also to include this dedication page uh, where the author said to all the great thinkers who have gone above and beyond, and especially to the teacher who dared us to have original ideas. Teachers are very, very important. And Billy's Buddha, a book that I stumbled upon uh, quite recently, is about this exceptional boy who pours over books and imagines, but does very poorly in school and in PE but he's very, very imaginative. And one day the school says they're going to have a writing competition. He was very excited. He borrowed every single library book, went back, and then this was the book that he wrote. But unfortunately, he didn't win a prize. He was very dejected, brought all the library books back to return to the library, and he went giggling in the library, and every child in the library was reading his book, the book that didn't win a prize, but the librarian said that the book won top marks for imagination. He got 20 out of 20 for imagination. And Billy really was so happy that the book ended with him in his imagination as Superman flying home. We are focusing only on academic excellence to produce the next Steve Jobs. Of course, we also heard today that uh, his dad made Steve Jobs regretted a lot of the things that he was too focused on work. But uh, one of the things that many of us will remember him for will be the contributions that he has made. And so for us now in Singapore, when we are trying to dilute the, the academic excellence a little bit, I say a little bit because it's very, very hard to dilute 
budget. Um, we, this is what we are going into trying to do, have, have a more balanced uh, life, both uh, balancing both academic and leisure. And I would like to end, I started with dragons, let me end with dragons, hunting dragons. The only dragon here, says mom, is the one in your imagination. Dragons are everywhere.